Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Well, kids, once again, the Real Film Nerds Podcast has returned. It's like we do these things every week. Crazy, right? Can you believe there's so many movies in the world that we can do it every week? A new one? Wow. Yeah, I'm being facetious. Anyways, my name is not mysterious, not talented, just plain old Matt Hinshaw, uh, realtor extraordinaire. If you are looking to buy or sell a house there, I'm plugging myself for once on my own podcast. But with me as always, the man, the myth, the legend, the uh, James Bond stand-in until they find a new one, Mysterious Mike Talent. Man, dude, I'm James Bond stand-in. That's awesome. Well, you know, we, we've we talked about in the past about what your real job is, and you're a spy. Okay. And you're, yeah, I you're yeah, not, yeah. sure. You, yeah, you're not a spy for the us, the U.S. government. You're a spy for another country. And my money's on, you know, Wales. Yeah, I, MI6. No, no. Well, I guess, I guess that would be MI6 if you're still part of, you know— great britain right you're still part of the isles yeah yeah still part of great britain yeah yeah so you're mi6 but wales mi6 so it's like you and one other person (laughs) uh yeah of course of course so all right mike this week for real film nerds episode number 308 the podcast that will never end oh dude that reminds me you know what next week is no is it next week no it's two weeks it's a couple weeks two weeks Oh, on Valentine's Day, baby. Woo! Okay, we'll talk about that later. I'm getting ahead of myself. I just looked at the calendar. That's what threw me off. Episode number 308, 308, 308. We're talking about the latest Christian Bale Netflix movie, The Boring Pale Blue Eye. Mike, why don't you go ahead and give us the rundown? Oh Matt, I I think you added uh I think you added an extra uh, word in the the title. I think it's just called the pale blue eye. Are you sure? Yes. I'm looking right at IMDb and I see boring right there in the title. Oh, well, I I think uh, I think I kind of know where this one's going. This is going to be a good one, Matt, cuz I love this movie. Really? Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's going to be one of those podcasts. Yeah, dude, this is a lot of fun. Anyway, all right, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and start the rundown to get everybody all uh, juiced up and ready to go. Dude, honestly, I have had farts more entertaining than this movie. Oh, my. Oh, my. Wow. I'm surprised. Did, did you even make it through the whole thing, or did you just start start sleeping? What, were, were, you in the, were you in the recliner? I'm always in the recliner when I watch movies at home most of the time. Sometimes I watch them from the couch. But... Uh, no, I, I stayed awake. I watched it on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. I don't remember. I watched it during the day, so I did, that's why I didn't fall asleep. So, All right. Well, I, <laughs> this is going to be a fun one, folks, because uh, we definitely have different opinions going into that, and that's kind of a rare thing for us. So this will be great. Anyway, uh, we're going to be reviewing The Pale Blue Eye. It was uh, directed by Scott Cooper, and it was written by Scott Cooper based on a book by Louis Bayard. Uh, It's starring Christian Bale, Harry Melling, uh, Toby Jones, uh, Timothy Spall. And this movie is a world-weary detective is hired to investigate the murder of a West Point cadet. Stymied by the cadet's code of silence, he enlists one of his own to help unravel the case. A young man in the world would come to know as Edgar Allan Poe. All right, Mike. So you already know my impressions on it. I thought, okay, okay, all right. I'll just do positives and then I'll do the negative. You'll hear about it later. You'll hear about it later uh, with Ma Hinch at the end as well. Uh, I tried to do it fairly quickly on the radio, but acting amazing as always, especially, you know, Christian Bale, of course, but Harry Melling, absolutely wonderful as Edgar Allan Poe. I really, really liked him breakout for me on him. I think he did just incredible. 
Costumes, out of this world. Very, very good. Uh, cinematography was good. Nothing special, but nothing bad. Sets, very good. Very dreary. Very reminiscent of like um, the older style films, you know, Nosferatu, stuff like that. Very just dark and dreary and, you know, very specific color palette. Very, I don't want to say demonic, but, you know, just it's not demonic, but you know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to get at. Just lots of blues and just sad and, you know, but yeah, yeah. Mike, we put so much emphasis here on the story. The story was just boring as shit and it just kept going and going and going. And then the reveal at the end, which I'm not going to do here. Great. Sure. Fine. Just blah. Okay, your turn. Okay. Uh so I, I will agree the the sets, the the costumes were amazing. I really liked the detail that was done for um the the period that this is reflecting. It's supposed to be the uh eighteen twenties or eighteen forties. It's 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 quite a quite a ways back in, in history. I, I forget the exact uh it did tell tell us right at the beginning that it was eighteen thirty, at West Point Academy. Yeah, eighteen thirty, October specifically. Um, it was uh, it was neat to kind of see some of that stuff. I hadn't seen like, I really like some of the uh, the the pub scenes or the bar scenes, um, with everybody in the candle lights and all that stuff. That was really cool. But. Uh, anyway, Matt, you, you're right. We we always talk about the story, and I didn't find the story boring at all. I enjoyed it. I I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just a uh, the I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you, Matt. I I really liked the the story. I thought it was thought it was entertaining, and uh, the the ending I I enjoyed as well. Okay. All right. I thought it was mediocre at best, Mike, but okay. I don't know, man. This this was a I I like this movie quite a bit. I didn't know if I would like this movie. I didn't really know what I was getting into uh too much. A period piece, murder mystery and I kind of I I I don't know. I I liked I liked the slow build up, Matt, and the subtleness of our 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 main character played by Christian Bale. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I liked it. Okay. All right. Well, I thought it was not great. I'll be nice. Not great. <laughs> so, so, so Matt, what did you say on the radio? Did you say the same thing? You just didn't Pretty really much. like it? Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, it, the, we just um, put so much weight on the story and it just went on and on and on and on and on. I mean, it's a two hour and 10 minute movie and it felt like it was four hours long. Uh, okay. All right. Well, you know, it didn't feel like four hours long for me and I, I don't know. I think I was just captivated by, I couldn't figure out who, who, who done it and uh, kind of the mystery of it. And I like some of the, I guess, classic misdirection and various things that were happening. Happening. Um, I don't know. I, I, I liked. Oh, Matt, you know another thing that was pretty cool about this was when, you know, this isn't giving away much, but the since it was uh the 1830s ice and and things like that were a different commodity so it was like it, it just added this uh difficulty for doing some stuff that take place in the movie and i i really liked it yeah well i like certain things like that but that still has it's not the story which I, I, you know, there's a lot of weight on that story, Mike. Just so much, 
you know, the costumes, the everything being lit by candles, you know, the dreariness, the locale, the military uniforms, all very, very interesting. The way they spoke, the way they walked, all that stuff was great. But just the story, man, just killed. Oh, I was going to say, you know, um, was it not enough romance or whatever in it? But, I mean, there's a little bit. It's kind of quick. I don't know. That's a l- That was a little bit. Maybe that's one of my issues is I kind of figured out fairly early on, at least, well, I don't want to spoil too much, but at, at least who done it fairly early on, maybe that was one of the letdowns. I don't know. Ah, okay. All right. All right. I, I, I see. So I guess by you uh, recognizing that the, the character, it just kind of fizzled more, made it more boring because you thought it was obvious um so uh, yeah one of, one of the reveals i'll no, put it that way how's that okay all right well i guess to move things along matt we'll get to the spoilers because this there's some aspects of this story that are a little bit tough to talk about without saying some of the storyline so all right why did the computer cross the road oh dude you didn't even do what are you drinking Oh yeah, what are you doing? What are you drinking? I didn't ask you about your dad joke yet. I was too excited, dude. I was too excited. Clearly, this must be a fucking killer dad joke. It's a good one, dude. It's a good one. All right, uh, do we need to go out of order then? I'll go out of order, Mike. Just one time, just for you. Okay. So, okay, Mike, what is today's? Just absolutely incredible. Can't even ask me what I'm drinking. Dad joke. I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand, though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh, though. Dad jokes. All right. Why did the computer cross the road? Because it needed to get RAM. Oh, that's actually kind of funny. No, uh, it was programmed <laughs> by the chickens. I'm <laughs> programmed by the chickens. <laughs> okay, Mike. I'll give you that. That was funny. Your yours wasn't bad either, dude. That's that's not bad, man. I I it think you're, you're up in your you're at uh, up in your dad game, your your dad uh uh joke game. Dude, I don't know how you can say that when I'm not a dad. So it it doesn't work like that. Oh, okay. So is it just a terrible joke then? And and uh, what, what how do you categorize it? I I don't know. Maybe I just know dad jokes. I mean, I might have a good answer to your dad jokes. How's that? Because they're your jokes and you are a dad. I just have the answers. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, all right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let's just throw everybody off. Mike, how does the pale blue eye, this is really easy, relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Oh, you know, Matt. Um, so, uh, Toby Jones was in this movie and he was also in Captain America, the first Avenger. Well, and also Christian Bale was in Thor, Love and Thunder. Was he in Love and Thunder? He was the villain. Oh, yeah. Dude, uh, you, you know. I didn't even need to look that shit up, Mike. Dude, you're 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 too good, man. You're too good. I I guess when I when I saw Toby Jones, I was like, oh yeah, they're like I I don't I don't know why I didn't think about Christian Bale, but it's probably because he was all super makeup and he was gore or whatever. Yeah, it, not super makeup, but yeah, I mean, he was really skinny and all painted white and black and gray. But yeah, sure, why not? But yeah, Mike, it just goes to show you that that's why I go home at night completely and utterly alone to a dark, empty house, and you don't. Wow. All right. There we go. <laughs> Jeez. Just, 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 whoo. Taking it there. Hey, you know, I'm just too much of a nerd, and I know it. I understand. Well, g- gotcha. 
Gotcha. All, all right, Matt. So so now we can circle back and I can find out what you're drinking to uh, to relax this fine morning, evening, afternoon. <sighs> Mike, you know it's evening in the Zona, but I am drinking a tasty Foster's Australian for beer. Oh, man. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, uh, just just an FYI, Matt. Uh, Maggie, you spent like almost a year uh, studying abroad in Australia. They don't drink Frosters. Really? What do they drink then? Um, uh, I can't. I can't think of the names right now. She she has a few names that she can name off, but it's it's not Fosters. So it's all just a marketing ploy to sell us another beer. For sure, man. So is that the other reason why you married Maggie is because she spent so much time in your beloved Australia that you spent a what two weeks in? Yeah, at two the age weeks. of seventeen. Yeah, two weeks. It was awesome. Is that where you're going to move next? <laughs> uh, getting a uh, work visa for a foreign citizen in Australia is like uh, it's tough. Very hard. Yes, very very hard. So, uh, I don't think we're moving there. I mean, it'd be fun to go visit again. Love to go scuba diving there. All right, Mike. So, what beer are you drinking? All right, Matt. So, I am drinking. This is a fun one. It's uh, Bell's uh, Hop Slam. Is that just really full of hops? Because it's slammed full of hops. Yeah, man. It's like it's. It's uh, on the IBU scale, which is the international bitter units. I think it's like it goes to 100. I think it's like 90. So that's gross. Uh, it, it's wonderful. It's a great beer. Sounds horrible. I'm glad you're enjoying it for the rest of us that don't drink that garbage. Yeah. Well, Matt, sometimes I think you could use a little bit more bitter in your life. I can't. I'm bitter enough. I really am. I don't need any more. It's like, uh, you know, that old saying where everybody's like, oh, you know, you want this sweet or whatever. And they always go, no, no, I'm sweet enough. I'm bitter enough. Okay. All right. So, so you drink your coffee with sugar? Yes, I do. <laughs> Try and sweeten up your life? Uh-huh. Get some of the bitter out. Okay. All right. All right. Gotcha. All right, Matt, I have a random question about this movie. Is it a spoiler? Because we should probably tell people we're now in spoilers. Uh, we are now in spoilers, but it's not a spoiler. Okay. You ready? Set. The opening of this movie, they, they write the uh, title, The Pale Blue Eye, and they write it in cursive. How many people do you think can't read that? Anyone born after the year 1999? Cuz I feel like the cursive's going away and I feel like people will be like I can't I don't know what that is. I don't think they even teach it anymore. No man, I don't think they do. Are you going to teach your kids cursive? Uh likely we are going to teach our kids cursive, yes. So they can write like in code and no one can read it except for the teacher. <laughs> yeah so they can pass notes that only the teacher can read yeah uh-huh yeah uh, i don't know man i i just it's it's just crazy some of the stuff that's going on i i hate to sound like you know we're old old people but i guess we're old people now man uh dude i'm pretty sure i've been an old person for at least 20 years oh yeah i'm just throwing it out there sure why not so it was like you hit 21, you're like, dang, old. Yeah. There's nothing else to look forward to other than renting a car. It's true, dude. You really do stop counting after after 25 when the car rental goes cheaper. Yeah. Well, and car insurance. You can rent a, rent a car at 25 and the insurance gets cheaper, at least for guys, I believe. Yeah, I'm sure it's only a little bit cheaper these days, man. I feel like car insurance is skyrocketing, at least... In, in my area. Well, maybe you need to learn how to drive better, Mike. Or maybe it's all your neighbors. 
It's true. I think it's my neighbors. I'm going to I'm I'm going to I'm going to tell them that we need to have you drive better. Yeah, I'm I think start you should call giving them defensive driving lessons. Well, you know, uh, last week we talked about HOAs, so I think you should call an HOA meeting. Oh jeez. Oh no. No HOA meetings, dude. I don't need any fisticuffs coming out. <laughs> okay, all right, Mike, back on topic. Since you love this movie, go ahead, tell us why you love the Pale Blue Eyes spoiler section. Come on, man. I I I I just I don't know why you thought it was so boring, dude. What 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 made it so boring to you? Just just the just kept going on and on and on and on. I mean, it was suspenseful and stuff, but dude, I figured it out that it was that family pretty much about 45 minutes in. Was it right when <clears throat> they were looking at the body again and he's like, "Hey, how'd you miss this?" Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I had a little bit of suspects there, but I wasn't uh, I wasn't fully committed to to throwing them under the bus. Well, and also how clean the cuts were and stuff, and there's no one else around there that is even somewhat trained even if the kids weren't trained at all. There's books that they could have read versus all the other people around like you know the students and things. They they wouldn't know unless their one of their parents was a doctor or in the medical field in any way, shape or form. So I, I don't know. I thought it was just, yeah, it's clearly this family. And then when they showed, you know, the, the portraits during the dinner party and all that other stuff. And, you know, you saw the symbolism and all the stuff that, you know, went back anyways. Yeah. I just okay. guessed it was them too quick. Now, Christian Bale, I didn't guess that part. So that was a nice surprise. So, so the, the Christian Bale part at the end, man, I don't feel like I saw that coming at all. No, that's the part I didn't get at all, which brought it up a little bit. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think we should. We should probably shouldn't give that completely away, right? That's a little too much. Whatever you want to do, Mike. But, but you know, one thing in the movie that was interesting too is Christian Bale's character was so like um, sad because like. His his uh, wife had passed away, and then his daughter had vanished, and uh, he was just very sad. But uh, even that was a little bit of a uh, mistelling, I guess. I, I I don't know. You're really trying hard not to give away the ending. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't want to give it away, man. I, I understand. I understand. I'm sticking with it. I'm not going to give it away either. But yes, uh, Christian Bale's character had the biggest surprise or twist or whatever at the end that I didn't see coming. But uh, I, I don't know. The whole family being, you know, part of it and, you know, demonic, you know, kind of ritual and all that kind of shit. Like, yeah, dude, that was very predictable. Okay. Well... You know what wasn't predictable, and I'm not even, I don't know anything about this, but the Edgar Allan Poe character, is that, do they just make that up for this? Yeah, yeah, it's it's fictional, it's not true. Yeah, because uh, I was like, isn't he from London? <laughs> like, like. No, he's American. Yeah, he's one of America's greatest writers. But, uh, and I do believe he went to West Point, but as far as like the mystery and the murder mystery and all that stuff, that's that's all made up. The story's made up. But Edgar Allan Poe is a person, is not, obviously. Uh, I believe Christian Bale's character is completely made up, too. Oh, okay. So, but Edgar Allan Poe actually went to West Point? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. That's really interesting, because, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not sure if his character was anything like what was portrayed in the movie, but he was very... Um, I don't know. Uh, as he said, he was a poet, and he was very he was very bright and knew people really well. And it it almost just seemed like why would you be going to West Point? You know, like it just it, to me it didn't seem like a West Point person. Yep. So uh, it doesn't say that it was called West Point back then. Uh, I'm just googling, googling it really fast without typing shit in. But uh, he was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1809. 
He died in 1849. Mike, do the math. Uh, he was 40? Yep. So we both lived longer than Edgar Allan Poe so far. Uh, yeah. Oh, all right, Matt. So all you got to do is make it to your next birthday and you'll beat Edgar Allan Poe. Woo! No, no. I got him beat. I already got him beat. Oh, yeah. You do have him beat. And you don't know how old I am. Jesus, Mike. Jesus. How dare you? But uh, it says his alma mater was University of Virginia and United States Military Academy, which United States Military Academy is typically West Point. Ah, it just wasn't called West Point at the time because it there was there was only one academy. There, there wasn't. Did we? Ha- we I don't think we had all the other stuff that we have now. No, right? well, there's there a naval no Air academy. Force. And there's an Air Force Academy now. Uh, I don't think there's a Marine Academy because the Marines are technically part of the Navy. But, yeah, there's a Navy Academy and Air Force Academy and uh, Army Academy, which is what West Point is considered. Yeah. Okay. Do you know we had a, uh, 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 I guess, well, I guess this is really off topic. Aaron will know, though. Maybe. Um a uh, kid we grew up with that taught at West Point. What? Are you kidding? Nope. Who 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 do we grow up with that teaches at West Point? Used to. I don't think he does anymore. Uh, Angel. Oh, okay. You remember he went in the military like right off the bat, right when we all graduated? Yeah, 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 yep. yeah. Well, yeah, he did. Yeah, I think he got his bachelor's or his master's and he was asked to teach at West Point. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. It might have been another military academy, but I'm pretty sure it was West Point because he was in the Army. Yeah, no, he was in the Army. Interesting. All yep. right, man. I didn't I didn't know that. And then his uh, younger brother, uh, Luis, a uh, professional soccer player. I think I knew that. Yeah, I think he I was knew a, that. A goalie, which is weird because uh, he never played goalie in high school. Well, I mean, uh, he figured it out, huh? Yeah, somebody somebody saw his potential in college or whatever. But yeah, hey, good for him. Anyways, all right, back on topic, Mike. Um, so I don't recommend people waste their time and watch this movie unless you're really into Christian Bale or period pieces or murder mysteries. If you don't, if you're not really into those, move along. Well, I. Uh- I would recommend it. I thought this was a pretty fun movie. I, I liked it. Uh, uh, Netflix. I, I don't know. I don't even know how they came up with doing this one or paying for this one. But uh, I liked it, man. So I would recommend streaming it. Okay. How many reels then, Michael? Dude, I'm going to give this one four reels. My God, man. We couldn't be any different. Yeah? What are you giving it? Point Dude. five. I give it two. Wow, dude, you did rip it up, dude. It, I didn't tear it apart, but I it just it, not my favorite thing. Okay, even, well, it's below average. It's below average, Mike. It's a D. <laughs> All right. So, so Matt, with with that, what 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 are we gonna watch next week, man? Oh, Mike, thank you for asking. Uh, so we have missed a handful of films in the best picture nominees. Uh, I try to make it a point to see all of them. I think you do too, but if I don't do it for the podcast, you tend to skip them. So next week I wanted to see this movie in the theaters. Uh, I think they put it back out in the theaters just because it's nominated, but it's not wide release. It wasn't even really wide release when it came out. Uh, it's loosely based on Steven Spielberg's life, written by Steven Spielberg, but it's The Fablemans. All right, dude. I, I know you have talked about this a uh, little bit earlier before, when it first came out, and I was like, dude, I don't even know what movie you're talking about, because I don't even think I saw it in our theaters. I think it might have been re-released now, but uh, yeah, so The Fablemans, that sounds good, man. Let's let's watch Steven Spielberg talk about Steven Spielberg. Kind of. I mean, it's Indirectly. based on his life growing up in Arizona in the 50s and 60s, but 
not really, but it is, but it isn't. Like it's fictionalized, but all the characters, the family characters are all based on his real family. Like the source material that the actors and everyone researched is all of Steven Spielberg's like home movies and stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Well, cool. Uh, obviously, it's got some nominations. Uh, it, it has more than just the best picture, I think. It uh, does. It has uh, seven Oscar nominations. So uh, this one did really well, and, and everything, everywhere, all at once also did. That one got like 11, I think. 11 or 12, something like that, yeah. Yeah, anyway. But uh, it's, it's going to be another long one, Mike. It's two hours and 31 minutes. I guess it's just this time of year, man. Maybe everybody's like, hey, it's cold outside. We're just going to sit our, our, our butts in these these nice reclining chairs, and we're going to watch these long movies. We're going to watch The Avatars, which is $2 billion. We're going to watch, uh, you know, uh, Babylon. Well, actually, no one watched Babylon, apparently. And then we're Or gonna... listen to our podcast on it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. And, and oh, then... no, I know. <laughs> yeah it's just it's just interesting dude interesting how long the movies get like it's like award season they're like all right hit them with the long ones yeah but the fablemans came out in uh november 23rd so it came out right around uh thanksgiving oh wow okay i don't i didn't realize it came out in november i thought it was a december so there you go all right mike well uh i i I guess that's all for this Real Film Nerds episode number 308, The Ocho. <laughs> 300 and Ocho. Yes, sir. <laughs> Isn't Come it three, 300 E Ocho? Come on, Mike. You know how to do uh, counting uh, Spanish, right? Uh, not Not in the 300s. Okay. All right. Never mind then. Do do you know how to do it, dude? Why don't you Why don't you bust it out, dude? I don't know what three hundred and eight is. I was thinking it was like treinta y ocho, but that's thirty eight. That's not three hundred and eight. Oh, okay. Well, dude, you were the uh, grading um, dude for you. You were the uh, what teacher's assistant for the Spanish teacher. So, Senor Tomoka. Yeah, dude. Do you know what's really weird? Is my nephew had him for Spanish too. That is weird. Yep. But you know what we did during that hour. I really, I mean, I graded papers, but most of the time, you know, I just go get you and Megan and we just go to lunch. Yeah, but I mean, I I, I know there was some paper grading at some point. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can talk all about that. You know, in the microwave that was leaking radiation that I always went and microwaved his coffee every day. That's probably why I have that growth. Dude. You should you should go after the school district. Good call, good call, but I I'm too embarrassed of it. I mean, who really wants to sue a school district for having a third testicle? <laughs> that's I guess that's true, Matt. Uh, that is a little awkward to talk about, but since you just blew it out on the podcast, let's do it. All right, Mike, we're go- we're gonna get it because I mean, you know, my height where the countertop was where they had the microwave, right there, dude. The boys were right there. <laughs> Well, uh, all right. I, I guess this is great time to end the podcast. So <laughs> we'll just leave it at Matt's testicles. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> let's uh, let's. Yeah. Uh, good let's... night, everybody. Fall asleep to that one. God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, um, thanks for listening, everybody, and. Uh, Make sure to stream, uh, uh, you know, go go to the theater, man. They they, they def- desperately need some people to keep going to the movies. And, um, uh, yeah, uh, follow us on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We'll uh, catch you next week. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. I just-
just want to talk to you. <laughs> you just want to talk to me. Let's talk to the Cinco Cities first, okay? Yes, ma'am, right All away. Right. Matt Hinshine studio with me this morning on Magic 99.1 to chat about the movies. Before we get to that, though, did you watch any football yesterday? A little bit. Yeah? A little bit here and there. Were you happy? Were you sad? Do you not, not care? Indifferent. You don't indi- really care. Wait, what? What well, is dude, wrong with I'm, you? I'm not a huge football person in the first place. Well, I shouldn't say that being that I've photographed football for over 20 years. Right, right, but right. And you're very good at it. Yeah, I'm just not a huge football person. Yeah. But, I mean, if I had to pick a team, i got to pick my Cardinals, you know? Oh, and they're yeah, not in it, yeah. so I don't care. No, I know. I'm a Cardinals fan, too. Very depressing. I, mean, I, I guess I would have liked <laughs> to have seen the Buffalo Bills just because it's been so long. Right, right. But yeah, I would have liked to have seen out, the Bills, so. too. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Kansas City Chiefs are going. And I love me some Patrick Mahomes. So if you'll jump on my bandwagon... I'd appreciate it. Uh, you we can, need you, Maddie. You can push the 20 over here then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, let's drop football. Let's talk movies. A pale, the pale blue eye is what you and your mother saw this past week. Tell us all about it. Christian Bale acts the snot out of it. Oh, really? Uh, it's very long. Yeah. It's very slow. Like how long? Like three hours long? No, it's like two something, but it feels like seven or eight. Okay. Two hours, eight minutes is what I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah. It's so just it's slow moving. Very slow. It's a period piece. Uh huh. The cinematography is really good. The acting is very good. Um, the sets are very, very good. The costumes right. are really good because it's a period piece. It's right. eight, 1800s West Point. Okay. But uh, outside of that, the I, story, which is very important to me, yeah. was very boring. Really? Very boring. So it's based on reality? No. No, okay. No, it's uh, fictional. Okay. Because Edgar Allan Poe is the guy that helps Christian Bale's detective character. Oh, that's interesting. And it's, it's a whodunit kind of thing, but mm-hmm. it's just... Not super satisfying when you find out who, and it's just like, okay, great, whatever. Oh, but no. it's just slow, and it's a slog, and I don't <laughs> recommend it. I really, I don't. <laughs> well, I, and it's on Netflix, so at least you didn't have to pay for it, right? Yeah, but I still pay for Netflix, yeah. so I did, kind of. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's fine. I don't, if you love Christian Bale, maybe watch it. Okay. Or if you want to study some very good acting or costumes. Yeah. Yeah, other than that, pass. Pass. Is yeah. it up for any awards? No. No, okay. No. <laughs> Fair enough. No. Um, how many reels are you giving it? I give it two. Two reels. Yeah. Ooh, out of five. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. that's low. And the only reason it's that high is because of all the other things I mentioned, yes. not the story. The story, I put a lot of weight on that story. Okay, what do you think your mom's going to say? She's uh, going to love it, isn't no, she? No, I don't think she liked it either. Okay, all right, let's give Ma Hinshaw a call and uh, get her thoughts coming up on Magic. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, Ma Henshaw on Magic 99.1. How you doing? Suffering from footballitis. Uh-oh, me too. <laughs> it's going to be a long off-season, isn't it, Ma? Oh, yes. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm not looking forward to that. But I am looking forward to talking to you about the movies. You saw The Pale Blue Eye this past week. What'd you think? Uh, it was a very... Scary. It was dark. I think they tried to give you the feeling of old time scary movies, you know, right. really old. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but it was long and it was dragged out in the middle. And I had, I'm sure, two or three sleeps. I couldn't count because <laughs> I was by myself. Yes. <laughs> Hold on. What's the difference and, between uh, a sleep and a snore? Well, that. <laughs> They're both the same. Sorry. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. I was thinking a sleep was longer. Right. A sleep is like you actually fall asleep. A snore is when you fall asleep and then a snore wakes you up. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I yeah, like yeah. that. Okay. All right. So lots of sleeps. Any um, nudity to mention? Nope. Not a thing. <laughs> That was the quickest answer she's ever had. <laughs> she was ready for that question, I could tell. All right, so how many cookies you given uh, the pale blue eye, Ma? Uh, I'm, I don't, I'm going to give it two and a half cookies. Okay. I was going to give it three, but now I'm going to say two and a half. Yeah. But it was scary. Scary. It's like scary. Scary. Scary is good. Okay, so you gave it two and a half out of five. Matt gave it two. He thought it was long and boring as well. Good. I'm not alone. <laughs> so this one is a is a pass for everyone, unless you like scary, or unless you like Christian Bale because he's he acts really well in it. Or if you love boring. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, Fair enough. That's that's a good thing if you want to kind of have a few naps, you right. know, watch it. Right, right. <laughs> there you go. If you can't fall asleep at night, put the pale blue eye on. It would help. Well, I did have to put it on after the football game, so it was a late night movie for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you got to see some football. Did you, either of your teams win? No, because of course I root for the Cardinals, but my husband was from Kansas, so you know that's sort of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was cheering for Patrick Mahomes as well, so at least we have that to look forward to in a couple of weeks, Ma. Oh, yeah. Phoenix should be crazy then. Yeah, Woo. that's a fact. Thank you for reporting for us on what station, Mahinsha. Magic 99.1. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. So I have some news. Um, you might want to sit down for this. I was already sitting down. Okay. Well. <laughs> I need to sit down Sit down more. harder, will you? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so I'm going to be off next Monday. And the following Monday. Will you be okay? Oh, my gosh. I know. I know. Well, I'll be back the Tuesday after Super Bowl Monday, which falls after Super Bowl Sunday. Are you going to the Super Bowl? Well, I'm hoping to. I've got my fingers crossed. I'm working on I'm working on some tickets to the Super Bowl. But either way, I will not be here uh, the Monday after the Super Bowl. So you want to come in the Tuesday after the Super Bowl? Sure. Why not? Okay. All right. And will will you let your mom down? Easy. With the She's news. gonna hear this. She's gonna be very upset. <laughs> okay. Very upset. All right. All right. So uh, send me a text and let me know what movie we're gonna be reviewing in a couple weeks. Well, okay. Uh, so I was gonna preface this this way, but this will just let you know we caught almost all of the Best Picture nominees. Okay. We've gotten six of them. We've missed four or five. All right. So we're gonna do catch up on the rest of them. Okay. Good. So we can talk about that. We'll let you know which one it is that week. Okay. Sounds good. You guys check out the podcast. It's called The Real Film Nerd. You can catch it anywhere. You can get a podcast and you can catch Ma and Matt here every Monday, except for the next couple of weeks. On what station, Matt? <laughs> the Magnificent mm-hmm. Magic 99.1. I know that's, that's a it. terrible word. I'm trying. Yeah.